Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master, Mike Zano. Mike, how are you? I'm doing very well. So happy to see you all again after just seeing you all uh, a few days ago. This is awesome. Vegas boot camp was amazing. It was really so fun. amazing. And uh, guess who else was at the boot camp? The technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Good to see you. We got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you feeling? I'm doing great. I had so much fun at boot camp. Well, it's good to see you. We growled every night in honor of Bearland Aaron Williams. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing well. Thanks for the growls. You were missed. You were missed. But the big papa was there giving out the goods. Tate, how you feel? I'm good. Yeah. I'm fortunately, uh, I've recovered nice and quickly. It was, uh, it was a little scary with the, you know, the grasshopper plague, but it seems to be dying out. I think the heat's finally killing off all of those bugs. So uh, <laughs> Vegas should be back to normal here shortly. But Great. Great. And of course, the land geek Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Start learning about anything you want at investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Good, good. You feel good after Vegas? Feel great. Great. Ener all great. energized and everything. Ready to go. Awesome. I, I, it, was, it was great seeing everybody. If you didn't make Vegas, um, no worries. Come to the next one in Phoenix. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. And I believe we've got a date for Flight School Live. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School Live. Just learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay. Let's talk about our favorite actor. I, actually, there's a tie for our two favorite actors in the community. There's Paul Flanagan the second, who's got a Netflix movie coming out. Um, you know, I should have been more prepared for the name of his movie. Uh, 90 feet from home. 90 feet from home on Netflix. Paul Flanagan the second will be in that. He was at boot camp, but also Jason Parker, another actor uh, in a variety of SoFi commercials, by the way, that we saw, he had a really good question that he messaged all of us. And he asked this question. Okay. In flight school, Scott talks a lot about sales, being persistent, following up with people, using the Fibonacci sequence, etc. I've employed that and tried to be persistent in my sales calls, texts, emails, etc. I never want to bother or pester people. I never want to be that quote unquote annoying salesman. So if someone responds to an ad, I'll follow up with them. Usually if they don't respond back, I wait a few days, then a week, then two, etc. I'm not hounding them, but just checking in. My thought is you responded to my ad and asked about the property. So why would you get mad about me following up? Especially because it's not every day. I try to give space, etc. But here lately, I've had a few people block my number. A guy said I was quote unquote too pushy. Another guy cussed me out. I don't know if this is just part of the job, normal, everybody experiences it. Do I need to just grow some thick skin? I know I'm not pushy. And honestly, I believe I'm just being consistent. And nowadays people think ghosting and ignoring should communicate the message. I told one guy that if he let me know he wasn't interested, he'd never hear from me. But how am I supposed to know that? Eric Peterson, how would you respond to that question? Well, there's, there's a lot there, but I think that, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for me is I want to know how Jason is following up with those people, because it's really important that, you know, we talk about a, a very kind of long and extended follow-up process, but if you're following up and every time you're saying, Hey, I, I wanted to, you know, see if you got the information I sent about that property. Are you still interested in it? You know, if you're basically saying those types of words in each email, I think you could certainly upset a lot of people. Um, 
But instead, if you're taking the direction of asking those open-ended questions we, we talk about all the time, um, you're trying to, you know, provide good information for those potential buyers, whether that's education about your business or just buying land in general. So, you know, it really depends on the content of those emails, but certainly even though, um, you know, I, I guess I think we all get those kind of responses from time to time, but no matter what the content is of those emails, but I think if you're getting a lot of it, that would be my suspicion is that you're focusing too much on the property and making the sale as opposed to how can I help this customer and solve their problem? Interesting. Interesting. Bearland Aaron, what's your thoughts? Well, I kind of agree with Eric. Um, you know, because if you're hammering the, the, do you want to buy this property kind of thing? Um, then you're, you're kind of sounding like that old antich of a used car salesman, you know? Um, whereas, you know, sales is quite different today. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, an expert to be able to teach it or anything, but I have learned a few things, um, that today, you know, people are much more savvy and, to be um, stronger in sales, you need to solve their problems, like Eric said, you know, so um, what you're trying to do is communicate with them and dig down to the root of what problem they're trying to solve with this piece of land that they contacted you with. And then, you know, try to show them how your company and your land can solve that problem for them. Um, but I do think, you know, you are gonna get some of those people. Um, Maybe they didn't even remember, maybe they, they were on Craigslist after a few too many drinks and don't even remember, you know, contacting you or, um, you know, it's hot. It's the middle of summer. People sometimes get a little bit cranky. You catch them on a wrong day. They had a bad day at work kind of thing. Um, so that, that's, you know, the thick skin, you got to get a little bit of that. Um, not so much that you're callous to customers, but just understand that some people are going to be that way. And then you just move on with life. You can't let it bug you. You can't um, because the next person you talk to might be so thankful that you have this piece of land and it's exactly what they're looking for. So, yeah. All right. Great. Great. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt, what's your take? Well, I have a couple of things. He said he's following up with people two weeks later. Well, he was saying I'm following up with them using Scott's process. So okay, which is days, and then it'll it'll Fibonacci. continue to expand in the Fibonacci. Yeah, that's one, two, three, five, eight, and thirteen. So after thirteen days, that probably is a little much, right? Besides the deal of the week or drip campaign, right? Uh, additionally, I'm curious what CRM you're using, Jason, because when you send your autoresponder out and you're using the Fibonacci series to contact people, in most of these CRMs, it'll show you who's opening and clicking and who's interested. So if two weeks later you're contacting someone that never ever has opened any of your emails or responded to you, never clicked through, then you know that might not be a, the best use of your time. Now, if what, you, wait, wait, Mimi, what if they're not taking your phone calls? It sounds like he's calling them. Yeah. Honestly, I won't call someone after two weeks if they didn't open or click through on any of this Fibonacci series or my autoresponder, right? That's showing me that they're not interested in my CRM. Now, someone who's got seven clicks and five opens every other time I email them, yes, I'm going to call them. And two months later, when I have something that I've marked it, that, that something they might be interested, yes, I'm going to call them. So, I noticed that a lot of people aren't using CRMs. And there's really a lot of good information in there. I feel like a lot of folks are just following up with people who email them and missing out on a really good interest of people who are opening and clicking their emails uh, in that Fibonacci series. So I would take a look at who's really interested before you go call them two weeks in. Uh, and then additionally, part of that getting tougher skin, I came from a very white collar career, career, career field and there was kind of a way that you you interacted with one another, right? And so in this business, you get people from all ends of the spectrum. And some of them can be very kind and polite, and some of them can just be really rude. And you do, you just have to let it roll off your back and move on, 
right? Um, that, those are my suggestions. Yeah, I was actually thinking of setting up a whole new uh, website of just playing the recordings of people cursing me out on voicemail from their offers. Because some of them are so funny. Um, it could go viral. I can see, I, I can see Tate's, the, the wheels are spinning. He's like, yeah, we're doing it. Well, I've got a, I've got a bank of them already. Like, I, I know, probably have like, like three minutes worth of angry voicemails ready to go, Mark. So we just got to get somebody in there with some good mixing abilities, add a sweet beat to it, and boom. Yeah, like the first thing is warning. This is <laughs> explicit language. You hide your children. So you want to be a land investor. That's what we're going to call it, Mark. I think it should be angry, angryoffer.com. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angry offers. The voice message for this guy said, the deed is done. There's blood everywhere. Leave a message. <laughs> you need all kinds of people. Wow. Yeah. Even, even Mike's uh, eyebrows raised on that. Zen master, Mike Zeno, what would you uh, say to Jason? Um. Well, yeah, that was kind of scary, Mimi. I don't know what the heck that was. <laughs> I got to say. Um, that the, but I would say, you know, Mark, you always say we're marketing and marketing. And you guys just touched upon um, something really important, like you get offer letters back, right? These people aren't going to always be happy, right? It's the same thing when you're doing lots of marketing on the, on the sales side. There are going to be people that, I mean, we're dealing with everyone. So First of all, I, I agree with the, the thick skin quote, not to say that he doesn't have thick skin, uh, Jace, but I'm just saying that, you know, don't get your, don't feel, don't take it personal. It sounds like maybe he's getting a little personally like, hey, am I, am I not doing this right? Uh, that being said, what's the language he's using? I don't know. Uh, maybe there is something in there you should analyze what you're saying um, that maybe could be taken the wrong way. I mean, we all can think back. Well, maybe not all of us, but I know I can. In high school, when, you, when you're trying to date someone, you know very well they don't want to date you, but you keep going and trying and trying. But there's a really real feeling that it's not going to work out. And you just know it, but you still keep chasing it, right? So, Mike, that's how I got married. <laughs> Persistence beats resistance, baby. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. But, but, but you know what I mean? I think that uh, it's not everybody, right? What did you say, Mark? Some will, some won't. What, what's that one you always say? Yeah, some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. That's uh, from the sales whisperer, Wes Schaefer. Yeah. And I think that is spot on. You know, you just, uh, you got to keep going. I always say that marketing is like a parade. And if you do a couple of ads, your parade goes five feet, but there's a mile long parade. And someone in that parade wants to buy your property, right? But if you get all like upset or something at the beginning and you stop your marketing, uh, then they're never going to see it and you're never going to sell it. So, yeah. Fantastic. Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, what's your advice to Jason Parker? You know, don't worry about it. If you're not being pushy and you don't feel like you're being pushy, then you're probably not. There's always going to be someone out there who thinks you're a used car salesman and you're getting them to buy something that they maybe they don't want. Uh, but the reality is, it sounds like he's just really excited and passionate about the properties he's bringing to market. And he really, really, really knows this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a majority of the people who reach out to him. And listen, I can't blame the guy for wanting to get in touch with these people. He's excited. He knows this is a great deal. It won't be around for long. And if they want it, they got to act fast. Now, we're all big boys and girls here. And everybody is who's listening to this is as well. Don't be afraid to take a hint, right? If somebody is uh, screening you and, and blocking your calls, you know, give it up. I mean, don't waste your time trying to convince somebody to buy this property. We're not in the convincing business, right? That's not what we do here. Our prices speak for themselves. If somebody is interested in what we have, they're going to take action. But I'm not going to sit there and force you or convince you that this is a great opportunity. You know it is based on the price and what you want. That's what I'd say to him. I love it, I love it. Scott Todd. All right, so look, th there are a lot of unknowns as we've all talked about. We, we don't know what each call is saying or each message is saying. If it's saying, hey, are you still interested in this land? Or hey, what do you about buying this property? Or hey, like you, that's not going to solve any problems, right? Like your job 
should be to solve problems. That's it. Like you should be figuring out why they're even looking for land in the first place. And so if you did your job correctly on the front end, which I'm going to assume that you did because I trained you. So if you did your job correctly, you would be asking questions. Hey, why are you looking for land today? And then what you would do is you would go back and you would craft into each follow-up something that has to do with that problem that they're trying to solve. You see, I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make is that they, that they get focused on the property. The property is the lead generator, okay? Just because someone responds to you on this 40-acre property does not mean that they are a good fit or even have an interest in 40 acres. They may have just been curious how it works. And so your job is not just to follow up obsessively with everybody. Your job is to understand why they are looking for land, what they're looking for. And if this 40 is not a good fit for them, find them and lead them and steer them into a direction that will get them their problem solved. So your job is really to answer questions. If you're going back to them on each follow-up call saying, hey, the property's still available. Hey, would you like to buy this property? Hey, can I get you that down payment today? Well, you're annoying. Hey, I don't know what more to say. But if you're now crafting those, forget the property now. If you're following, uh, if you're crafting follow-ups that basically say, hey, Jason, you told me that you were looking for a property that you know you could you could build um, you know a, a ranch on, and the last one may not have been good, but here here's a different one for you, or here's a different area, or maybe ask more questions. Have you thought about a different area, right? Like if, if you're just following up to follow up on the same property, you're annoying, and that's why you're getting ghosted and everything else. So think think differently, craft something different, try it a different angle. And then if they're still mean to you, get over it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that um, if I could craft like the perfect response to him, I would literally sprinkle in everything everyone on the round table said into one definitive statement. Because what everybody said is true and accurate and, and relatable. We don't want to be annoying. We don't want to be in the convincing business. We want to solve a problem. We don't want to focus too much on the land. We don't want to, you know, keep chasing somebody that hasn't even opened our emails. And we just know they're just kind of ghosting us. But we also don't want to be timid. We want to, ha we want to collect those no's. We want to show up. We don't, we want to be persistent. We don't want to just assume that they don't want the property. We want to assume they do want the property because that's why they contacted us. So it's very subtle, all these things, and we all are making different assumptions about that. So it depends on, you know, you, you really have to take all those, those answers into account to really be self-reflective and know and then make that adjustment. So what well, is a great question, Jason Parker. So thank you for providing us uh, with our, our roundtable discussion. Now, I know Jason. You know, this is guy, he is not a pushy guy. He's not a super slick guy. I mean, he's, he's an actor. You know, he can, deliver, he can deliver a line. So I would say that just from what I know about him, he's not being annoying. He's not being pushy. He's probably just a little taken aback by two bad responses and just needs a little bit more firming up that that's going to happen, you know, keep being persistent. So now we're at that point in the podcast where we get to pick on Mimi Schmidt and ask her for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Hi there. I have a link to how to bring, it's the article's called How to Bring the Magic of Automation to Your Trello Boards. Um, I noticed a lot of folks, we talk about a lot of systems and a lot of apps. People seem to get their, um, CRMs and their data repositories mixed up with actual the process flow. Trello is a great tool for that, but you know, Trello can actually, they have this um, card creation. I don't know what you call it, but you can set it up. So for instance, let's say you get an accepted offer from Ring Central in your email box. You can set that up to automatically create a card in Trello for you. So there are a lot of 
really cool tools in there to help you automate your pro your your process flow. And I find a lot of folks really aren't doing that after this past boot camp. Um, I find they get caught up in a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff of what they're doing. And, and, and we talk a lot about how to hire VAs, but it's just one way to automate the, that incoming information on accepted offers, whether it's a phone call or a fax um, with accepted offer, just to create an automatic card in there for you to start on, on your Kanban board in intake for due diligence and closing landings. Wow. Very, very cool. They have this thing called power up. Do right. you power up? So Trello's free. But if you want to power up, it's $24 a year. So it's a great tool. But if you invite people to your board, you get 10 bucks off. So honestly, at this point, I don't think I have to pay for an upgraded Trello board to like 2025. <laughs> so, so it's a great tool from that perspective. Um, and so at this point, I'm not really touching much of my intake because if something comes in through Ring Central, it gets a card gets created in... Um, Trello for my intake manager to get started on. Right in the, you can just, you can say which column you want it to go to. So it goes right into the inbox. So when she comes in in the morning, she just gets started on what's coming to the inbox and I don't have to get involved. Oh, this is so geeky and so cool. Wow. So they do have other power ups. For instance, like there's a card repeater. So Every other week I have a ad copywriter update some of my ads, right? And so, yes, I can tell her, I need you to do it every two weeks, but actually seeing that she's, that way I don't have to go anywhere else, but one place I can see that she's actually done it because she's dragging the card from started to complete. And I can even ask her, hey, make sure you paste the headline that you used for that deal of the week. So I can actually see, I know that she's done it, right? And anytime people move around stuff or, stuff comes into the boards, I get automatically, automatically generated an email. So it uh, helps me catch up in the morning with what they've accomplished. Wow. Eric Peterson, is this making your heartbeat a little faster? Hey, it's automation. It's all good to me. Wow. What about you, Scott Todd? Are you salivating? No. I used to love Trello. Now, it's just a website. Okay, you're going to leave it at that? You're not going to expand I mean, on that? What more what is there? With you after, what happened with you and Trello? LG Pass, baby. Oh, that's, that's right. That's more for. That's right. That's a fully automated solution. Well, that's <laughs> more for like document creation, right? Well, it's document management, right? It goes to all all in, you know. Um, and then I, I like I like PipeDrive. I think PipeDrive is a good fit for my business uh, with the scalability. But I used to use Trello all the time. Like it was my go-to platform. So I don't hate Trello. I I like it. I love it. I love. You looking for a controversy though? Because if so, let's. Let's re-edit this thing, cut out, and we'll just we'll just all attack Mimi. But how can you attack Mimi? Like, no, notice that like if Eric would have given this tip, oh, the the angry claws would have been out on Eric. But Mimi, you're like Mimi gets passes, man. I get passes. I do. I know. See, like yeah. you do. I noticed that Mimi and Zeno they get the passes for tips of the week, and so yeah, Zeno with his quotes. <laughs> Mike, do you have a quote for us? It's been a long time since we had a good quote. Wait, you're on mute. There you go. Well, I don't know if I can think clearly right now. It just really been hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't mean. I just are said you, that are you, in a, are you in a glass cage of emotion right now? Yeah, I don't even know which way is up right now. I'm just... I, mean, really, I wasn't being mean to you. I was simply stating that. But you uh, weren't. But you, got, you weren't being nice either. Let's be real. Oh come on, man! No, I, mean, I like. Not like I said that is. I will say this, Scott Todd. I do have a quote: "With great power comes great responsibility." You can hurt people. Spider Man. That great power. Listen. It's not like I said. The anything about like you know the quotes are like it's not like I bashed Vegas for having like a grasshopper uh you know like B 
being inundated with grasshoppers. Hey, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? I mean, it's, it's not necessarily like a bad thing. It's kind of cool. It only that, happened. That picture that Mimi sent, that is the coolest thing. The light of the Luxor whew, oh going up into the sky and the, and the grasshoppers. Maybe you got to put that on Facebook next Tuesday when this comes out. Yeah, like, I mean, in, in, like, you know, to come to Scott's defense, right? <laughs> if I had to work on a Microsoft Surface, I'd feel a little edgy. Yeah, you uh-huh. saw what happened when uh-huh. uh, we did our activity on Sunday, Mark. We basically had to pull out every joke we knew for the systems malfunction, the software broke, and that was <laughs> off a Microsoft platform. Listen, Drew. Hey, apparently you, you can't really to touch my machine. Hey, apparently, it's voodoo. I saw touch it. I saw his screen voodoo. Doesn't mean touch screen. <laughs> your your Mac is breaking like up, man. I got every other word there. I don't know what you said. <laughs> Let me repeat myself. Apparently, touch screen doesn't mean touch screen. Here, let, let me let me tell you something. Here's a funny story. You see this? You see this MacBook uh, Pro here? Oh, that's the new one. You bought that? No. Listen, my my daughter comes to me yesterday. And she's like, Dad, my keyboard is not working correctly. The shift key doesn't work, and neither does the T key. So I've tried everything in his pot in, in his brother. Can't get it to work. This is a known issue, by the way. Yeah, this is I a recall. To, that's it. You guys got it. You said it. That's it. I now have to get in my car on Thursday, drive down to Apple. They're going to take this machine from me. They're going to have it a week. Meantime, my daughter's without her machine. Now, give her one of your extra ones. Listen, why should I have to do that? Listen, my Surface keyboard's never broken as a known issue. It, it doesn't happen. And if it did, guess what? I'd take the keyboard off. I'd chunk it in the garbage. I'd go buy another case, and I'm back to work again. Boom. We're, we're feeling the surface anger right now. Yeah, a lot of tension it's, right now. I mean, it's, 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 it's like disposability. Uh, after I've had my fourth cup of coffee in the morning, this is really how I just react in the world. You know? <laughs> the so anger. It's, it's all feeling. love, man. It's all love. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, it, bring it in, Scott. Bring it in. I'm not a bring computer spy like you guys. You need a hug. Yeah. You need a hug, buddy. Come here. I'm good, man. I got come all here, hugs come I here, need. Come here. Come here. Let me give you a hug. Let me, let me tell you what I have. I got a nice clean face at yeah. a fraction of the cost. Bring it in. <laughs> Bring it in. Joke. Yeah, no one knows what we're come talking here. about. Come here, buddy. Zana, Zana, what do you got? This, 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 this is all spiraled out of control now. That's why I raised my hand in the comments. I didn't want to just burst in. I just want to say from my observation what happened, Tate waited all weekend for the right moment to hit some funny buttons on Scott's computer, yep. and I'm going to call that a shenay nay nay nay. Oh, <laughs> another inside joke. Another inside joke we got. Hakasane nay nay. Hakasane nay nay. No one knows what we're talking about at this That's point. That's funny. Funny. Scott, Scott, or Scott or Boston no. does. Wait, did we, did, did we end the last podcast, or are we still rolling, and this is, we just kind of like forgot Let Freedom Ring, and we're just we like bringing it. Let's just, let's just do it. All right, ready? I want to thank the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans and being, hopefully they're not going to leave a comment that says, Hakasani Nene. But if you want to leave a comment, you want to get a free $97 passive income launch kit, just email support at thelandgeek.com with the subject line, Hakasane Nene. Any way you want to spell it, we're going to send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit. But please also subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. You can tell we're having a lot of fun here. Hopefully you're enjoying listening to it. Send it to your friends on the social webs, the interwebs. It really helps us. And uh, with that, you guys ready? One, One two, three. Two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Scott is so annoyed right now. He can't even do the Let Freedom Ring. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to know something. Like literally, I just looked at our reviews, okay, on Apple. Have you guys ever looked at these reviews? We have a 4.9 rating on 439 people ratings. That's pretty solid right there, right? But That's all the ratings we have is only 430? 39, 439. Come on. But we have a three-star rating from somebody. They're like, cut out the fluff. What? You can always turn it off at the end. The fluff is what. The fluff is what makes us human. Yeah, I really like robots. We're not land investing robots. We better stop recording.
This is all fluff. <laughs> Only a third of it is actual good educational content. I thought the, I thought like the last 30 minutes was good. So just on this Like one. reading a book. A book is all a story with a couple of great, you know, things you're going to learn. But the story is what conveys it, the lead up, the follow up. I don't call it fluff. I but you know what I, but you know, that's, and that is a really good business lesson is that you don't take one person's opinion and adjust what you're doing. It's one person's opinion and they're entitled to it. And I'm really actually very grateful for that three-star review, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to start taking away the bonus content at the end because I'm having a good time with it. Now, if there was a massive trend, and we got an overwhelming response that said, hey, we really can't stand listening to you guys at the end of the podcast because uh, for whatever reason, which I don't know why anyone would say that because it's at the end. It's always at the end and you can just you know, go and listen to another podcast if you don't. Um, then we could say, okay, maybe we should, you know, not rip on Bearline Aaron so much. But in the meantime, we can create joy by making fun of Bearline Aaron's Horrible interconnectivity. Eric Peterson on the guitar. Scott Todd and his horrible Microsoft Surface. Tape on a Mac. Nobody, nobody finds that funny, Scott. That's just I it. love it. So does Eric. Look, he's smiling. And also he's Mike Zano. Too. Hey, Mike, Mike Zano. Mike Zano and I are, are in the, the Yaya Surface Brother Club. I heard you had to teach Mike Zano what a web browser was. No, 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 no. Uh, no by the way, no. I think we should. I think we should re reveal the Hakasani and Day joke. So we're at dinner. We're at I think that's dinner. A, wait, that might be a sensitive topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Could be. Let me ask Laura. No, nope, it's not sensitive. Oh, Laura, Laura says it's okay. Well, and, let it go. And, and uh, Scott's uh, wife, Erin, and uh, Mike's wife, Laura, are very close. And so we're having dinner. And Aaron wants Laura to go to this club in Vegas called Hakasani, right? And it's going to be like this huge VIP treatment. I don't know. And Mike looks at Aaron and says, Hakasani Nene. <laughs> we all start busting up laughing. Like, there's no way she's going to this club with you. No way. There's just no way. Yeah. And now, instead of saying no to my children, I just say Hakasani Nene. <laughs> and it works like a charm oh, that's funny. but but i don't think there were any regrets there's lower regret not going yeah. nope not at all she'd much rather um have a sip of whiskey with me and then uh and go and uh enjoy a nice tv show in the room yeah absolutely i will say that uh tate really came through for us though mm -hmm. on the yes. caesar's buffet bacchanal yes. so if you guys are going to vegas and you need any food advice, email Tate and he'll give you his, uh, I mean, I, I, he's a foodie. I mean, let's just face it. It, it was, was a top great. buffet. It was yeah. a top buffet. It's a lot of fun. A few places left that we still need to go try, but uh, yeah, it was a drop the mic moment. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that Thai place. The yeah, Anthony Lotus. Bourdain Thai place, Thai Lotus. Lotus yeah. of Siam. Is it Lotus of Siam? Yeah, next time. Next okay, time. so we got Lotus of Siam. Now, what about Mr. Chow at Caesars for Chinese? Yeah, that looks good. I've never been there. There's a noodle house that I wanted to go to instead. It but great. It did. Making the fresh noodles. Yeah, hand-pulled noodles. Oh. Ooh. Any, any other restaurant recommendations? We got Lotus House. We got Bacchanal for buffet. I mean, it's Chow Vegas. There's so, much, so many options out there. It's ridiculous. Depends what you're in the mood for, but they got it all. All right. Well, that's what the, you know, boot camp was so fun. And uh, you know, we did see on the surveys though. East Coast boot camp. Yes. Don't make yes. anything don't make any promises, Mark. You're being recorded right now. I'm not making any promises. I'm just you're saying recorded. Just saying. It's, it's, so what do we got to do? Do we need to submit uh, some kind of formal, you know? This is, this is where we insert on the road again by Willie Nelson. Right. Mike and I and Eric, we all need to submit some kind of proposal for which city? How are we doing it? 
I mean, does Eric really get a vote? Because he'll kind of just be Team Scott with anything Scott wants. So that Memphis would be great. What's the time zone in Memphis? Oh, not Memphis. No, I, I don't know. Florida. What about Nashville? Florida. No, Atlanta. Atlanta. We can all get to Atlanta. We can all you know, get you to know what I say? You know what I say for that East Coast boot camp? Oh, no. Here it comes. Hakasani Nene. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Oh, oh, Wait.